ghost tank will keep you in the know. We have a big ghost tank will fix your techie woes and we'll break things and we'll make these till we're all together raking and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank, come and join our fire crew. In the big ghost tank, we will show you what to do. And we'll hack it till we crack it and we'll tell the world about it and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Okay, so the sound is broken, uh, but we're going to show you some stuff with a Pi Zero anyway. Because look, freaking Pi Zero! Look at this stuff. So here we've got the Pi Zero. We, uh, we've got various things here, so let's take a look at that. There it is in all its glory. Pi Zero! So, comes free on the Magpie this week, and what you do is you get to solder your own header, so if you see that, it's absolutely got no headers whatsoever. But you can solder your own header, and you can have it like that, or you could have it like that, or you could have it like this. So there are just a few ways in which you can solder your own header onto the Pi Zero. And you can now get it on the Pimeroni store. And yeah, there we go. That's kind of the deal. Whoa, there is sound. Right, so I'm not mowing. Yeah, there's just no sound this end. For some reason, Windows thinks, yeah, Windows thinks the sound's all crackly and horrible. Um, so if that isn't getting through to you on the internet, great. Um, if you want to catch up on stuff uh, about the Pi Zero, we have a dedicated web page for it. So pimeroni.com slash zero, and you've got all the information we saw fit to make available today for it. Uh, build tank stuff there, that's all right. Phil will be putting up some guides there. Um, we've actually got a kit, which includes, as well as the Pi Zero, um, the essential adapter cables. So you have the thing with, say, the lab dog, where finding the adapter cables was a pain in the ass. Uh, hopefully we're not going to get that this time because for just that eight pounds, you can get the Pi Zero with a mini HDMI to a HDMI adapter, um, a USB on the go to USB socket, so you can plug in your USB Wi-Fi dongle or a keyboard when you're setting up, um, and also a, a male 40 pin header, so you can solder it on, you have to solder it yourself, otherwise the Pi wouldn't be that cheap. Um, and that comes with the accessory kit there, so all that is there for £8 if you go to our store. Uh, carrying on, yeah, there you go, just get the info online. We also made some fats for the Pi Zero. Uh, the one you can get right now is the scroll fat. Later today we'll have the Explorer hat as well on the shop, and we'll also be doing the fat DAC, which will probably be tomorrow, maybe Monday we'll be releasing that. And that's, uh, yeah, just for kind of DAC sound out of your Pi, especially your Pi Zero. And these work with the normal Pi as well as the Pi Zero. So don't think they're just an exclusive thing. Um, yeah. And if you look down there, most of those are kind of £10 to £12. Uh, and we'll be releasing a whole slew of these that are just kind of cut down in size. You maybe have to solder them yourself. Um, but you've got all the stuff you need, and they work great. They have the same footprint as the Pi Zero. Look at that. And yeah, they also work in a normal Pi, so how bad can that be? So there's some more of the accessories. You've got the mini HDMI adapter, yeah, Pivo Zero, because we always do a Pivo. Uh, and we're gonna release some modification plates for that fairly early on, since the Pi Zero is going to be very hackable. we we'll just go back to the close-up camera. So Connor has already knocked up the watch plate or the strap plate. <clears throat> and if you look at that, you can attach a Velcro strap or you can attach kind of a NATO watch strap to that and turn your Pi Zero into possibly the world's clunkiest timepiece. So there we go, there is a scroll fat. Hopefully you can see that a little bit there. It's upside down to you, but it says, Yar, all aboard the good ship Pemeroni.
Yeah, so there's the scroll fat in action with a Velcro tie on it. Uh, actually looks a lot better in real life than it does on the internet, I assure you. But again, some nice bright white LEDs for making your own comrades battle badge or whatever. Again, just stick a uh, stick a battery pack into the micro USB power there, and you're off. So I've waffled on now uh, randomly uh, about that. Let's take a uh, closer look at actually what's on board the Pi Zero. I've got something here I can point with. Yeah, we've got a Sharpie. Okay, so we've got the Pi 1 chip here. Now part of making this kind of really, 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 really cheap was to use kind of the single core chip, but it's got 512 meg of RAM on there. Great stuff. You've got the 40 pin header, which is the standard 40 pin header layout. There are a couple of modifications over here though. You see here, there's an extra two two pin headers. One of those is the run header, which is the reset switch essentially. And the other is the TV composite out. So you can, yeah, get the composite out there if you want to use old school, old world applications. That'll be particularly good if you're using this for something like, say, FPV on a drone. Uh, the power is the normal micro USB power. And next to it, you have this micro USB port, which is technically a USB on the go port. Not sure what the foundation are doing about software there. I know Gordon and Mark were tinkering with some on the go applications. So I wouldn't expect that to be here day one, but they are tinkering around with that so you can switch the Pi into kind of the mobile phone mode, uh, which would be, yeah, good fun. Uh, they've also gone for a micro, a mini HDMI, which is a really good choice. Safe space over a full size HDMI. But yeah, the micro HDMI is a bad port, so using the mini is a bit of an inspired choice. Um, the SD card is on top. Uh, it's a non-sprung port as well. So I bet, yeah, there we go. I've got an SD card. So they finally got rid of that spring, which it never used to fail much, but we did see three or four in total where the spring eventually failed or didn't work. So that's just shove it in straight non-mechanical port there. Just shove it in, yeah, all good. So again, nice simple choice to cut down cost and just make this a bit more reliable. And if you look on the bottom, absolutely no surface mount components on the bottom, further reducing the cost. Because obviously this only has to go through a pick and place and solder reflow process once. This one has the head of solder on there. Um, if a lot of people demand it, we will uh, we will kind of supply some of these, maybe soldered, but again, doing this is quite an intensive operation compared to kind of it being done at the production stage, so the price will be a lot higher. But we know some people don't like to solder, uh, especially 40 pins. 40 pins is a baptism of fire, um, soldering-wise, but you'll get pretty good at it, and we'll have a guide for soldering there as soon as we can, just to show you how to solder properly if you don't know already. Um, now one of the things, this being unpopulated and being a very hackery item, as I mentioned before, is you get to choose what headers you put in it. So if you always wanted your Pi to have the receptacle header, the female header there, you can do that now. So it can be hot mounted to things. Or if you wanted to go crazy and have a bit of right angle headerage, there we go. Phil hacked that onto his um, Pi. Oh yeah, I've totally not mentioned the price, Sandy. Yeah, this is the $5 computer. It's four pounds, including VAT, um, and you can buy it on its own, but please buy it with the adapters, because then you save the shipping twice, and yeah, helps us out, it's all good. Um, but yeah, four pounds is insanely cheap. It's it's like the world's most affordable computer, it's amazing. And yeah, I expect to see these in kind of a William Gibson-esque way to be um, just in kind of rural areas in the middle of Africa, running their Wi-Fi, um, just because that's so good. Uh, <coughs> so I think I've covered off the basic things about what we do there. So I'll show you just kind of the adapters going in there. So plug that in there. There we go. And that gives you just full-size HDMI for setting up stuff, although you can get a direct cable. But this will mean you can use cables lying around. Uh, that will go in like that. There we go. Then you've got a normal USB receptacle for having a Wi-Fi hanging off like that. <coughs> Good stuff. Um, 
there's the scroll fat as well. Again, comes like this. We don't populate the header because it saves a bit of cost and means we can do it as cheaply as possible. Um, that's good. that's ten pounds on the shop now, and that's just a matrix driver chip and a matrix of LEDs. Um, Solder your own header again. The other thing you can do is if you've got a he header like this on the Pi, you can solder it direct. So let me just get that on there. You can't see it, but I'm wrestling off screen with a couple of bent pins here that we bent earlier doing something. If you've got any questions, by the way, just say them on the YouTube chat because I'm looking at it over my shoulder here. So there we go. I've snapped that on there, and you end up with a pie fat sandwich that's really, really, really slim. Just look at that. Look at how slim that is. And that's even with, you can see the head is at an angle there. But then, yeah, if you do the direct soldering there as well, you could do the direct soldering on the right angle there. But you've just got to be careful of the orientation, because what was there... And we now get some inverted pinage, so you end up with... Yeah, is that right? Does that look right to me? So it's normally there, and now, yeah, pins on the bottom there. So you end up with a sandwich like this. There we go. Look at that. Nice little self-standing LED display, if you want it, using right angle headers. So we'll have those on the shop as well, in the zero category. Um, and that's just, yeah, a nice thing to get your appetite wetted. Uh, Connor's been walking around with this hanging off his belt with the battery pack. Um, we're actually working on a really neat little LiPo solution for this. Uh, but more about that fairly soon, hopefully. Um, yeah. There's an overview of everything you're going to see today. We're also going to have a really basic case on the Swag Store. Just so you can have a case for next to nothing if you want a bit of protection. Um, Adafruit have a similar one in the US. We're going to have the equivalent in the UK here. Just a little couple of poor labels there so you can tell which one's the power and which one's the data. Because the labels on the board are quite small. And it just gives you a little bit of protection on the bottom and a little bit of protection on the bottom, top. Sweet. Uh, normal hats also work with this as well. Uh, so there we go. There's a prototype piano hat on top of the Pi Zero. Works perfectly fine. Um, if you want to support hats with it, we'll have a little adapter plate like that. So that'll help you support full size hats on the Zero. Although that's not too bad to start with. So yeah, exciting times. I'm just going to talk over the close-up thing now. Um, the other thing mentioned there, yeah, the Magpie. The Magpie is out, and if places run out of stock of the actual Raspberry Pi Zero, you can get it on the cover of a Microsoft Pi magazine. So, buy a magazine, get free Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, yeah, which is just stunning. I actually did. I was doing interactive DVD work when it was a thing where newspapers were giving away DVDs, so part of that was my fault. So it's much better to see something like a useful computer given away on the cover of a magazine. So, yeah, if you can't find the Zero, because I think it'll probably sell out pretty quickly, um, go find Magpie uh, Edition 40, and you'll get a free nice blister pack, Raspberry Pi Zero, and some really good guides on soldering, on setting up stuff on your Raspberry Pi Zero, what to do with it. Um, it says there are no add-ons for the Zero, but that's not true anymore because we did what was basically a ninja development cycle and turned around these new things in about, yeah, two weeks, three weeks, which is, yeah, go us. So guys, any questions? Do you have three types of 40-way headers in store? We will. By the end of today, you will find all three types. You will find the right angle, you'll find the female, you will find the male in store in the Raspberry Pi Zero collection. Um, so you can get that. We're also hopefully putting up this uh, fun little thing here, something that Ben Nuttall has been pushing. So let's see if we can actually see that. This is just a little on-the-go shim. So that converts your micro USB into kind of a USB shim. Now they're a little hinky in that you can put them in the wrong way. Uh, what have I got here that I can use? So if we've got, we've got the USB-A there, and we put this little shim in with the contacts up 
voice contact up, stick that in there, and it turns it into a micro USB. So that is useful if you want to stick stuff directly into the Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, so there we go. Suddenly, a USB A socket has been turned into a micro B on the go adapter. Good Phil, morning. Phil is now live on the internet. Oh. Come sit down, Phil, with McDonald's for your present. Ah, oh, oh, McDonald's breakfast. <sighs> Who have we got? Good morning. Uh, compatible with Flotilla. Uh, there's no reason why this is not compatible with Flotilla. Have you had it working yet, Phil? I haven't tried it, no, but there's no reason it would not be compatible with Flotilla. It's a Raspberry Pi 1, why would it not work? You need an adapter. Um, we're in the planning stages of having a FAT that will do Flotilla as well, but we'll wait until we ship Kickstarter before we kind of release that or do anything with that. But it'd be a nice cheap way to have untethered Flotilla, um, so you could have a roving robot. Powered by a battery, little flotilla fat on top um, for a minimal number of motors, and then off you go. That'd be an all right application. That's true. Wi Fi off it. Yeah. Now it becomes secondary to flotilla, almost. <laughs> <laughs> You're basically just using a pie as a brain add on. Yeah, not a bad way to use it. That's what this is intended for. Um, okay. Yeah. So we've covered the basics. I don't know if there's anything people want to know. What about news of the Yar Booty Challenge, Richard Haler says. Okay, for the past two years, we have offers on over the Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend. Um, this year, we're kind of rebranding it as Geek End. And instead of kind of doing the offers, which we'll do the offers, um, no, the Pi Zero won't be one of those offers. It's already four pounds. <laughs> um, but we will have a series of challenges and questions live on Twitter and live on YouTube here. Um, there'll be kind of an hour show on Saturday, maybe an hour show on Sunday in the evening, where there'll be a bit of a show and a tell, and there'll also be the instant win questions throughout the day. And what we do is we tend to give away kind of cool gear, stuff like that. Um, yeah, just for answering smart questions, or even really dumb questions. Um, anyone disputing the Austro-Hungarian Empire as a country will be banned for life from the competition. Um, yeah, that includes you, Scone. Um, yeah, so we make up loads of kind of these clever little geeky questions and you have to answer them and we give away kind of gift cards or we give away bags of swag um, and it's all free to enter and it's really for kind of geeks who love Pi, who love knowledge, who love kind of trivia to kind of get some stuff on Black Friday weekend without kind of, yeah, going to a stampede somewhere which, yeah, just frightens the hell out of me. What are you doing Black Friday weekend, Phil? <laughs> Stay away from Let's everywhere. not go into that. I'm, I'm descending into, into nowhere. Into, um, what's it called again? The place that's on the sea, but isn't Skegness. Scarborough. Scarborough. Scarborough's all right. Going to any lots third, of arcades. Um, so you can get lots of old arcade games. Play some. Really? Yeah, uh, play some out room or something. I'm, I'm only about as sophisticated as the 2P Falls. Yeah. That's, that's as far as I go. <laughs> You at least expect a screen bundled for four pounds, says Sandy. Yes, we will work on the screen and the sandwich and the wheels. We could draw a picture of a screen on a sheet of A4 paper that you can hold near the pie. Yeah, I and mean, you got the you got the scroll fat. I just point out as well that Beautiful. we call them fats because they they are not hats. They are partial hats. They are pirate hats. They are proto hats. Um, they are not hat spec. We've taken off things like the EEPROM and anything that's not essential, made them half the size to match the Pi Zero, um, which puts them out of the hat spec quite clearly, but also makes them a lot cheaper. Um, hopefully, as we develop more, and if everyone buys loads, we can make them cheaper still. So, yeah, support your pirates. Pretty pleased um, with how that shows up on camera, actually. Yeah, it's, it's normally not the case. Cause, yeah. I think I nailed the brightness. <laughs> Camps have pretty, yeah, awful dynamic range compared to the human eye. Yeah. So that's your conference badge application there. Um, yeah. Close that up. You just have to walk around with a mains power supply. <laughs> Our battery will be. Resolution of scroll pat fat is, he says going to the internet, 11 by 11 by five. So if uh, five pixels high, you can just about do very basic blog text, which is why it's five pixels. We just managed to squeeze them in there and keep it all nice and square. Uh, is it Retina? 
Yeah, it can do retinal surgery if you turn the brightness up to full. Um, <laughs> what you do is you just kind of stroke the pattern you want That's to carve so into your retina, and then just hold it really close to your eye, and yeah, you'll have a new retina out of it. Yeah, any more questions, folks? Any more questions? Oh, we have to wait 20 seconds now. <laughs> the internet is supposed to be faster than this. I'll keep an eye on the um, the Pi Zero column that I've added to my tweet deck. Yeah, it was quite interesting because I added it last night, and everything was just Pizero or something that's not English. And yeah, Pizero. Pizero. Yeah, I'm it's very sure, Pimoron. Not sure what it was about, but it's now been completely trounced <laughs> by Pi Zero. Yep. Oh, there was something. There was. There was already something on that hashtag, but it was old. Right. Okay, so good. You don't have to worry too much. As long as it's old. Uh, We're yeah. talking about 1,294 days ago. Yeah. It's almost like they had the foresight to know this day was coming. Yeah. Uh, can you Pi the Power Zero using a LiPo battery? You will need to convert. Uh, most LiPos are either 3.7 volts or a multiple thereof, depending on how many cells they've got. Um, so you will need a LiPo adapter. We have an Adafruit one, uh, which doesn't fit so nicely on the Pi. We have things like the MoPi, which will take wide inputs, so from various types of batteries. Um, John has developed a really neat little LiPo adapter for the Pi. It slides onto the, um, slides onto the GPIO pins and allows you to put a hat on top still. Uh, that will be coming out as soon as we've got the boards and have tested it thoroughly. Um, that will be a really neat way to kind of slip a LiPo in there in a way that's not kind of ah, boards everywhere. So look out for that coming out as a way to power your Pi from batteries, from a LiPo especially. I'm just answering the Raspberry Pi with PIX because they said they'd love to see PIX when you get your hands on a Pi Zero, so hmm? it's going to be Bill's Tank selfie. Right. Go on, join me. But haven't they got loads of them? <laughs> They've probably got lots of pictures, but... Mm. Right, so oh, yeah, I'm doing too, selfies so right. Yeah, you need the camera pointing this way. You're, ah. not, a, you're not an Irish <laughs> gentleman. <laughs> right, smile, internet. That's us being vainglorious on the internet. Magic. Right. Sneaky Pirates hiding this from us. Can you stack these hats like the others with the large adapter boards you have? Sorry, I forgot what it was called. Black Hat Hatter. So that's Connor Ballard from Ragworm. Ragworm, again, they did the lovely work on the PCBs for our fats. They've come out beautifully. Uh, couldn't be happier with those. Um, oh, come on. What is up with your computer? Getting jealous. Yeah. I've seen the future coming up behind it. Oh, I can no longer control vMix. vMix is the software we use to kind of live. Yeah. There we go. So can you stack the hats? It's entirely possible to stack these hats depending on what pins they use. Um, if you check pinout.xyz, XYZ. We're not in America. Pinout.xyz. It's easier to say Z. I'll let you off on that one. Yeah, I just hate it. I was actually trying to change the domain name details about 10 <laughs> years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, I was talking to uh, the American kind of domain providers. Oh, yeah. And the domain name had a, Z a Z in it. And I kept saying Z. And she, the lady on the phone just said, yeah, honey, I don't get it. What is it? No, Z. What? Oh, you mean Z. <laughs> Z is a name, honey. And it was like, oh, wow. Jeez. <laughs> I don't oh, want to use Z, but um, anyway. Yeah. It's like you know exactly what I'm talking about, but you're just going to make a point. You're just going to anyway, make it. You're going to make me say Z, aren't you? And they made me say Z. So, um, Z so if you check your pin out X Y Z. Phil will have updated details about which pins the hats use. Um, because you sold this yourself, it's much more, um, much more possible that you can stack the hats. The one we're going to hopefully do fairly soon is have the fat DAC, which is the one that's going to have audio awesomeness. Um, for £12. If you stack that with the scroll hat, then you should get a little VU meter so you can see your audio doing uh, useful things. So some stackability will be available. Um, your mileage may vary depending on what pins it use. Uh, yeah. Uh, look out today for more fats coming out. Uh, and over the coming couple of weeks, um, we've got lots in the pipeline because we've just, we want small hats. 
Um, we want them to go side by side on top of each other. We want them to be cheap, cheerful, available. They've definitely um, got some um, interesting kind of potential with Black Hat Hacker, which allows you to intrinsically put two hats next to each other because you can just get a fat above a hat <laughs> and get some kind of stack. Yeah, so we'll demo that. Um, hat stack. Probably over the weekend. Uh, yeah, so there you go. There is the Pi Zero and a bunch of possibilities. Uh, yeah, let us know about any questions and we'll see if we can do another special bilge tank or a show during the geek end uh, when we're doing Yara Booty. So look out for the Yara Booty hashtag um, for your chance to win cool swag and gift cards for just answering some questions you probably know the answer to anyway. Uh, I think that's uh, it for now. Thanks for tuning in and putting up with the audio issues, which apparently you don't have, but we have. So, yeah, interesting. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.